thank you very much for coming along to today's virtual staff room it's lovely to see you all again i hope you're really looking forward to your new term and um, we are lucky enough to have elliot from google today who's going to give us an update on all the announcements that have been happening over the summertime which ones are current and you should hope to be able to use and which ones we're still waiting for and then we'll finish the session with some um q a from the people that have come to join us so thanks very much for coming elliot and over to you Perfect. And yeah, thanks for having me on today, Paul. Uh, Paul sorry, it's an absolute pleasure to uh, to be on. I will apologise in advance if you hear a dog going absolute crazy. I've got a baby Rottweiler in the house and when the postman knocks, she'll either come and jump at me so you'll see her scoot across the screen or she'll go mad at the door. So I will mute momentarily if that happens, but she's fast asleep at the moment. So Hopefully she doesn't. Um, but yeah, the aim of today's session is just to fill everyone in on all things Google for Education. So I'm going to be running through a number of the recent product updates. Some you may have seen, some you may have not seen. Um, there's going to be some visual content in here showing some of the demos of all of the cool new features that we're bringing out. Um, so let me just get the right screen up. We can all see my screen that side if I can just get a thumbs up. Yeah, we can see it fine. Thanks, Elliot. Awesome. Thanks, Paul. So, yeah, as part of the session today, um, the updates I'll be sharing uh, will just give you an insight as to what's coming across the four key product categories that are Chrome, Classroom, Workspace, and Google Meet. Um, so, with that, I guess I'll dive right in um, and kick things off with the updates of Classroom. Um, so first and foremost, we have roster import, and this is actually one of Classroom's top requested features. Um, so starting very, very soon, um, schools with Google Workspace for Education Plus are going to be able to automatically set up classes and keep rosters in sync with their student information system powered by Clever. So IT admins will be able to create classes via Clever, meaning that teachers will no longer have to manually create classes and invite students to join them saving everyone lots of valuable prep time and don't worry this is not going to overwrite classes that you have all individually created they're all going to be desync straight in there next and coming later in the year uh, to all skews this feature that we see here will help teachers and co-teachers to easily schedule assignments to multiple classes at once this is the number one most requested teacher feature um, and is seen as a big blocker to deeper adoption. So we hope you'll all be super excited with this. Um, and if you want to assign that Macbeth essay to your English section, you can do so now in just a few clicks. We've also got some really exciting updates to share about classroom add-ons. Um, this is going to be coming to beta later this year. So for organisations with the Teaching and Learning Upgrade or Education Plus, with Classroom add-ons, we're partnering with the best EdTech tools so you can seamlessly bring your favorite content right inside Classroom. Um, the nine partners you see on the right-hand side there is who we're gonna be starting with, but there are gonna be more to come. Uh, so let me show you just a quick example of how this add-on works. Just start that again, sorry, that started at the wrong point there. So I'm just gonna show you how this works. Um, in action with an example tape book widget. Um, so first, as a, as a teacher, you simply go to create an assignment like you used to, filling out the typical instructions and adding in some in, uh, attachments. But this is where the add-on comes in. So as you saw, we selected the add-on button and open book widget to find an assignment and then assigned it to the class. So on the student side here, they'll see the assignment in the stream and click to view the instructions they would then open the book widget attachment and the assignment opens up where they can do their work. Notice that they've never had to leave classroom or don't have to do a separate sign in once they finish their work. They simply at the top right hand side there click turn in. And then back over to the t-shirt side here, now you're ready to grade. So if you click on a student name, you can then see the student's work in line in classrooms grader view. You can then add any subsequent comments and then go ahead to return at the top. This will automatically pass the grade back to the classroom's grade book. Um, following on from that, in the next few months, um, we're also gonna be releasing a dashboard to measure student engagement activity. So when this activity dashboard launches, you'll be able to easily see when a student was last active, including 
when they last submitted work or participated in the class through comments. And this is designed just to make it a little easier for teachers to get a pulse on how the entire class is doing or identify students who may need that little bit of extra support. Coming soon, um, something we're super excited about is the launch of offline capabilities in the Classroom Android mobile app. And with offline mode, there's going to be a whole new world of possibilities where learning can keep going regardless of connectivity. So students will be able to start their work offline, review their assignments and attachments, and write assignments in Google Docs, all without internet connection. And they'll be able to submit their assi assignments once they're completed and they're back online. And finally, we're making powerful updates to how teachers can use Google Meet in Classroom, making it easier, safer and more secure. First and foremost, students will have to sit in the meeting waiting room until a teacher has joined the meeting link. Next, guests not on the classroom roster will have to ask to join so no one wanting participants can get into the class itself. And finally, co-teachers in the class will also automatically be co-hosts in the meeting and only students listed in the classroom roster will be able to join the meet. Um, and in order to make it easier for teachers to engage with their students whilst you're presenting, we've also recently rolled out a new refreshed meet experience that allows you to see your presentation content and students at the same time. So you can easily unpin your presentation to see more of the students on the call, uh, which I'm sure you've already seen and made best benefit of. Um, and you can also see names which are always visible to quickly see who's who. We also recently announced that Meet is going to start supporting multiple hosts, making it much easier for teachers to partner with other people helping to manage a class. So you'll be able to choose hosts in meetings and all meeting hosts will have the access to the safety controls there. And this feature is going to be rolling out in the coming months. Um, and there's a little visual here just going on on the right hand side um, to show you exactly what that will look like there. Um, we're also putting some improvements into hand raising so students can participate with even more confidence and teachers can see more easily and hear who's raised their hand with an improved hand raise icon and sound so people who raise their hands will show up on the grid and there will be a persistent notification so you can easily see how many people have raised their hands and in what order and then finally when a student has raised their hand and they're done talking will have a feature that allows the automatic lowering of the hand itself. To make Meet more accessible, teachers and students will also be able to pin multiple tiles to customise what you want to focus on. So students, for example, can easily pin a sign language interpreter in addition to the teacher so they can see both at the same time. Um, you may have saw earlier this year that we announced uh, that Meet would soon support closed cap in five languages to help people follow along and stay easily engaged. Um, in the next couple of weeks, these will have launched to people everywhere. So uh, that's going to be a uh, feature that's going to be readily available. Um, and then for educators within the teaching and learning upgrade or education plus, we're introducing additional features to take engagement and inclusivity to the next level. So how it works is with the presenter speaking in one language, you can see captions translated into another language in real time. And this is going to be especially helpful for those who have multilingual classrooms and to facilitate meetings between educators and parents or guardians who may speak different languages. Next up is public live streaming. So public live streaming will give you the ability to live stream to anyone outside of your domain, making it easier to host school board meetings, school events and more. And this is going to be launching in beta later this year. In the coming months, you'll also be able to use closed captions during live streams. So this will make them a lot more accessible, as uh, we can see the example of on the right hand side there. And moving into safety announcements, we've extended additional meeting safety controls for hosts using tablets and mobile phones, like the ability to end meetings for everyone on the call and mute everyone at once. These are now live in iOS and coming to Android in the next few months. And if you do need to quickly prevent distractions in the coming months, you'll also be able to turn off everyone's video at once with a, a new feature we're rolling out called Video Lock. And we're also making breakout rooms safer and more secure. Uh, so again, in the coming months, hosts will have capability to um, choose to have breakout room safety settings that match the safety settings from the main meeting. 
And when you end the breakout rooms, participants will be forced back into the main meeting, meaning no more students are gonna be left lingering behind. Starting this month, you'll also be able to control which meeting users your domain can join and who meetings created by users within your domain, within the new settings within the admin console. And this can be used as a real good feature to help you to create the right boundaries for different age students and facilitate bringing in external speakers and more. Um, in the coming months, admins will also be able to control quick access and chat lock at the group or OU level in the admin console as well. Um, earlier this year, again, you may have saw that we also announced that admins with Education Standard and Education Plus would be able to end any meeting in their organisation directly from the investigation tool. Uh, this feature um, is going to be rolled out in the coming weeks. And one of the biggest announcements, again, you may have seen across the board is the introduction of Smart Canvas. So Smart Canvas is not a product or feature itself, but rather a new experience that's enhancing collaboration in the apps that you're using every day, like docs, sheets, and slides, by making them even more interactive and intelligent. So Smart Canvas is made up of a bunch of features that we'll go into a little more detail now. So the first is Smart Chips, which will allow you to pull in helpful information from other Google Workspace products while working in a document. So for example, if you're a student working on a group project, you'll be able to quickly embed files from Drive or tag students in your group right into the document by simply typing the at sign. And once people are tagged, you just hover over them, over their name to quickly chat, email, or set up a video call. We also recently added interactive checklists to docs to help you stay on track wherever you're working and whatever you're working on. So checklists are very similar to bulleted lists, except you can mark items once they're complete, which is very, very useful as part of collaboration um, and actions on next steps that you're working on with your teams internally or externally. Um, you'll also see the introduction of table templates in docs. Um, and one of my favorite topics is topic voting templates, which lets you easily gather feedback directly into docs itself. And you could use this by having your class vote on specific topics or project ideas to really help keep them engaged and involved in their learning. Uh, later this year, docs will also offer writing tips, including warnings about offensive words and language, as well as other stylistic su suggestions. Admins can easily turn this off if they prefer not to have it in their own domain, um, but we're seeing it's uh, gonna be a particularly popular feature within Classroom. Um, in Sheets, assisted analysis will be able to provide formula suggestions that make it easier for everyone, not just data analysts, to derive insights from data. And these suggestions can help guide students and reinforce concepts to make their writing and analysis skills a lot more impactful. We're also making our products work together more seamlessly so teachers can focus on what they do best. So as you'll see here, you can now easily present your content to Google Meet directly from docs, sheets, and slides at the click of a button. And this allows you to quickly present and see participants and content at the same time back to the Meet tab. Now, taking this a step further, educators with Education Plus will also be able to embed their live Meet video calls in their doc sheets and slides. Um, again, just to make it easier to see everyone whilst uh, collaborating on pieces of work together. Um, and as you've seen, these individual features within Smart Canvas are really, really cool on their own. But when they're brought together, you really see how Smart Canvas can be used to transform collaboration. So the example we're seeing on the screen here shows how a group of students may be using Smart Canvas to more effectively collaborate on a group science fair project through first and foremost, adding the document in, um, adding the ideas, uh, creators, and the voting system, which we ran through, and then assigning the next steps and using that as a typical che checklist to mark off once the work has been done. So we know how much is on educators' plates right now, so we're making our tools even easier to use so you can get valuable time back to focus on your students. And you can see this through what we're doing in forms via the simplification of the settings, uh, which will be rolled out in the coming months. So it's gonna be much easier and faster for you to set up your forms the exact way you want them to be set up. Um, so the example you can see here is a new settings tab at the top of your forms. 
with key settings made more discoverable, like the option to make a form quiz and control default settings to get applied to all of your forms and quizzes that have just been created there. And to make the forms more fun and personalized, we're launching 20 new fonts for you to choose from. Um, earlier this year, we also announced forms would soon start automatically saving your draft responsives for 30 days or until that submission was complete. And thanks to all of your great feedback during the beta, this feature is going to start rolling out um, in the next few weeks and will be available to everyone um, uh, as uh, back to school begins in September. Um, additionally, we are going to be announcing how we strengthen the security of Google Workspace for Education customers with drive security imp improvements and adding advanced security for Education Plus and Education Standard customers. Now, Drive already has built-in protections to help block phishing and malware content shared from external organizations, but we're adding enhanced protections to Drive that are going to allow admins to enable this kind of protection within their organization's internal Drive to help further defend against insider threats and accidental sharing of malware. Uh, I'm going to go into this in a bit more detail towards the end. Um, we're seeing security is obviously a very, very important um, feature at the moment across the board. So yeah, there's going to be a bit more content on that at the end. Um, but if we look again at Education Standard and Education Plus, admins will soon also have added controls to classify files stored in Drive based on the content sensitivity levels and enforce strong data loss prevention rules according to the classification with the Drive labels. So you'll even be able to set up things like DLP rules to have Drive automatically classify rules for yourselves. And this can help you to be more proactive about protecting some of your most sensitive data like PII or proprietary research, sorry. Um, the new Drive Trust rules will also give Education Standard and Education Plus admins more advanced controls around how files can be shared within and outside of the organization. So an example we can see here is if an admin wants to allow a subset of the faculty to be able to share documents with everyone, but only allow students to share files with people specifically to their school, the device trust rules and labels that are rolling out in beta um, will allow them to do that and become more widely available to everyone later this year. And we'll also be including the beta sign up sheet in a blog post um, that's going to be going out. Um, so we'll make sure that's uh, shared with C Learning to um, get some valuable insight as to um, what we feel is necessary in there. And um, so last year, moving on to Chrome now, we updated uh, the devices page of the Google Admin Console to show when devices reach their AUE. And now we're adding a new page within the Admin Console that enables admin to view the Chrome Insights reports. So the first report will be a view of all of the AUE dates of the device fleet, which will help you to understand and get a better insight as to how many devices have reached or are going to reach their AUE dates. Um, and these reports will be useful to help you prepare for what steps you take next with regards to new devices, how often that will need to be done, so on and so forth. Um, with the tra tra transition we've seen as well over the past 12 months to one-to-one -one device deployments, where students can have their own Chromebook. We're also adding in features to make it even accessor, sorry, even easier um, to pick your device up and start using it quickly. Um, this obviously works best for assigned devices. Um, and you'll see we've rolled out pin logins for education users, which means that instead of having to remember multiple long passwords and spend time typing them in, students, educators, and admins will be able to type in a sim simple six digit pin to log in. Um, for students who may also need an alternative input into their Chromebook, we have Switch Access, which is the ability to use built-in keyboard or an external device via USB or Bluetooth to control their cursor. Um, just launched in August, we've also introduced point scanning, which is a new navigation mode for Switch Access, and it allows users to select any point on the screen by first having a user choose the horizontal location they want to select and then having them choose the vertical location as we can see on screen at the moment. Chromebooks also come with two magnifiers built in, a screen magnifier and a docked magnifier. So we've just added a new panning method to our full screen magnifier. In addition to the current ability to pan the screen when your mouse hits the edge of the magnified viewport, 
You can now also keep the mouse centered on the screen and have the viewport pan as you move the mouse along. And to help users better understand how to use Chromevox, we've released new tutorials for Chromevox, including quick orientation for new users, which automatically launches when Chromevox is activated, along with interactive lessons, which help ask users to execute commands or press designated keys to continue. Um, and a practice area for a small set of lessons, which actually allows users to practice what they've learned in a sandbox environment. And best of all, the tutorial is also available for our touch devices as well. So with all these product announcements and based on what we're hearing that our customers care about the most, you'll see that the announcements that have been made with the new products fit easily into four key themes. Collaborative, easy to use, engaging and inclusive, and safe and secure. Um, so that really finishes up our review of some of the key product announcements that we're excited to be making across Chrome, Google, Workspace for Education, and Classroom. Um, but as I briefly touched on earlier, one of the best things about all of these products is that schools don't have to think twice about whether they're secure. So we recently announced a new safety narrative called Safe to Learning with Google for Education, which includes a number of new privacy and compliance announcements, which I'll briefly go through with you now. So as we build new products and features, we adhere to three principles, keeping your information secure by default, ensuring privacy by design, sorry, and giving you complete control over your school's digital environment. Google for Education also offers the world's most advanced digital security. It's proactive by default, and this proactive protection is built in and constantly updated to stay ahead of threats. We guarantee our industry-leading global network is up 99.9% .9 of the time. All data is encrypted using the, most uh, using the most stringent encryption technologies. Um, and again, with privacy by design, we're helping institutions to meet rigorous data uh, privacy standards. So GDPR is the um, key privacy standard here in the UK. Um, so there's assurance that no advertising ever appears in Google Workspace for Education core services, and students' personal information is never sold or used for personalized advertising. It's simply off limits. Um, for starters, um, just focusing um, a little more on our security and privacy principles, I just want to focus on what's launching in the next school year to help provide more visibility visibility and control sorry for admins and teachers as they build out their safe digital learning environments and um, so as a starting point for this we're introducing this new age-based access setting to provide a safer experience for students under the age of 18 when using additional services which are google products that can be accessed outside of the core google workspace for education suite and include things like youtube photos maps amongst a number of others so what we're going to be doing in this area is asking admins from primary and secondary schools to indicate in admin console which of their users, such as teacher and staff, are over the age of 18 using organisational units or groups. Um, and then when we get back to school in early September, the students who are under 18 are going to see a series of changes across Google that provides them with that safer learning experience. Um, so if, as admins, you don't make a, seg a selection by um, back to school start, then primary and secondary institutions are going to default uh, to a safer under 18 experience, whilst higher education in institutions will default to the over 18 experience. Now, these default settings are not locked and admins can always adjust them uh, within the admin console itself. Um, so as an example of this here, um, here's how the YouTube experience will be changing to students under 18. So students under 18 are only going to be allowed to consume YouTube content, but not create. This means the features like posting videos, commenting, live streaming, they're all going to be disabled. So if any of these users had previously uploaded videos using their Google School account, then they'll be able to use Google Takeout to download their content, if enabled by the administrator, that is. We're also going to be making changes if an admin has chosen to disable YouTube. 
users will not be able to view videos from youtube.com. Um, many teachers and schools love using YouTube because it has such a rich library of compelling instructional content. And we hope these changes just give educators more opportunities to use it more as a tool for learning um, as opposed to students being distracted um, and searching cat videos across uh, across YouTube whilst we're learning in the classroom. Um, and then additionally, all K-12 education users signed into a Chrome browser or Chrome OS device will be defaulted to having safe search on. So these Chrome users, sorry, will also be defaulted to safe sites, which essentially blocks going directly to an identified age inappropriate URL. Um, and there will also be a guest mode and incognito mode turned off so that students don't get around the policies. Um, these policies are going to be changing for both new and existing K-12 education users and those who have not overridden these policy defaults will see new ones later this year. Um, for all of these policies on Chrome OS, admins can still change the policies for individual, uh, sorry, individual organisational units, like, as an example, educators who may need access for lesson planning purposes. Um, and this way, we can provide a safer learning environment for students whilst giving the admins more choice and control and more visibility into what students are doing online. So that's it for me. Um, thanks for spending the time to learn more about the product updates, the privacy and security uh, updates. Um, we can now open the floor to any questions. Do apologize i have been talking at 100 miles an hour there and have seen the question popping up on the right uh, i knew there would be time to to, to open the floor so uh, yeah i'd i'd love to hear your feedback your thoughts on what you've seen today because uh, it's very valuable and it allows us to further develop and build on what we do with the questions that are raised here in mind excellent thank you very much Elliot. that was absolutely brilliant that was really yes there's been a, a number of questions coming in um, and I'll, I'll kind of go through them first. I, I want to just check with Stuart first. You've got a question about the different types of domain licenses, um, Stuart. Is that is that a, a longer conversation about what all the technical, what the details of each of those license versions are, or do you just want a quick summary? Uh, just, just a very quick summary because the the name had changed. So the Google Workspace for Education, uh, it was Google Apps for Education, um, and I was maybe if there's just a very brief way of saying if you had this then you have this and don't worry and um, chris can i put you on the spot and ask if you could give us a quick summary of those yeah, absolutely or, yeah no problem, so, all right, no problem. Okay. so yeah Brilliant. yeah stuart you're currently on um the um enterprise full domain over yep. at your uh, over at your um your school there now that is the equivalent of uh, google workspace education plus um, the main difference between the two is just the way the licensing is actually done. So with um, Enterprise, it's based on the number of eligible staff, um, whereas with Education Plus, it's based on enrolled students. Now, when your renewal comes around, I'll be looking at both those options for you and we'll be giving you what, you know, obviously any the, the, the two options, which is the best for you from a financial point of view. Um, but from a features point of view, they're exactly the same. Um, now, the other two are, just for anyone on the call who's interested here, are the education standard, which is aimed at the admin side. Now, that um, is £2 per student per year or um, €2.20. <laughs> There's also Now, that, again, you have to cover all of your um, enrolled students for that but you get all the administration tools, you don't get the teaching and learning tools. Um, the final option, which is a teaching and learning upgrade, that's one way you can take out uh, a single license or as many teaching and learning licenses as you want to cover staff who are interested in using the teaching and learning features. Um, that retails at £2.25 per month, uh, £27 a year, uh, €2.50, I believe, on that one. Uh, I didn't actually mention Education Plus, uh, that's three pounds twenty per student per year, or three euros forty per year. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks very much for that, Chris. I hope that that sorted that. And um, we're going to stick with um, Stuart's question. If that's all right. Um, there was a time when, um, if students arrived in a classroom meet before the teachers, Elliot, 
then they ended up being the host of the meeting. Has that bug been fixed? Sorry, what was that bug? There was um, a there was a bug where if students arrived inside a Google Meet before the teacher, even though the teacher was the owner of the Meet, that the student would end up being the host because they arrived first. Do you know if that's been fixed? Yeah, that bug being fixed. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's excellent. I, th I thought that it had. I just wanted to double check. Absolutely brilliant. I'm just going to scroll through. Um, and then still relating to um, meet question about breakout rooms from Dave. Um, any chance, any time scale for when we'll be able to record the breakout rooms within a Google Meet inside a classroom or in any situation? Um, I can find out and let you know when that's going to be available as a feature. So I'll come back to you on that one. I mean, it's, it's it, to give the, the context, it's, it's a big safeguarding concern, though, isn't it? You've got control and sight and recording of the main meet. So if something does kick off, you've got the evidence, but you currently haven't for the breakout rooms. And um, so I think that is, is a, will be an ongoing concern for schools, I think. So it's definitely worth um, considering that if it's not on the list, it ought to be, perhaps. Excellent. Thank you for that. I'm just scrolling through, just checking there are no other questions. If people have got a question that's not on the list, you can always raise your hand, don't forget. If you if you want to do that, and I'll I'll take the questions as they come through. I'm just scrolling through. So I don't know. Okay, Ian, can you jump to your question while I find the next question on the list? That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, Elliot. Uh, a lot of uh, people were very interested in the um, under over eighteen uh, sort of um, uh, activities that are being changed on the first of September. And as the first of September is only next week. Uh, then um, let's say I'm a, a student at uh, Jane's wonderful uh, college down in Cornwall, uh, but I'm uh, sort of 17 years old and I've got my uh, YouTube videos that I've created uh, to support my course last year. Um, obviously, I'm not even back at college <coughs> until uh, the 6th of uh, September. So um, the the ability for me to do things with those resources, I guess there's a period after the first when I can uh, access them and do things with them. Um, and uh, and also, uh, I think Stuart's mentioned um, how easy is it to just uh, change the settings for uh, for the students. Uh, yeah, it's it's relatively easy to do within the admin console. Um, if people haven't received comms about the updates um, as administrators in the account, uh, please let me know, um, and I'll make sure that they get they get shared out to everyone on the call. Um, but yeah, there's there's going to be details, or there was details in the comms that went out, which will have guides as to how these can be done, where it can be accessed within the console, um, and how you can create. EOUs within the account to um, apply the relevant access settings. Okay, I'm not quite sure whether that necessarily answers the question. Stuart or Jane, do you want to just jump on the uh, open your mics and just uh, make sure that I've, I, uh, we've covered it off? Yeah, thanks. Oh. Go on, Jane. Sorry. Should just correct we're North Devon, not Cornwall. Oh, okay. we, do have a bridge, we do have a bridge that divides us. <laughs> um, yeah, I am really, I'm not interested. I'm alarmed about this default for 16, 18s. I'm not sure this communication has reached our admin IT. They are busy at the moment installing new Wi-Fi all over the summer. So if I don't think they've even looked at it. Uh, we will certainly have lecturers who will want their 16, 17 year old students to create content and publish. It's it's quite alarming, really. Um, OK, Jane, I can I can look into uh, because there would have been comms that went out on this, but um, I can look into your specific case to see uh, what's gone out. Um, it's it's going to be relatively easy to to make the changes within the admin console and there's going to be guidance around how that can be done but uh yeah if you can leave that with me up and i can look into okay i'm just i'm just putting um it's neil tanton i'm just putting his name in the chat so that's our contact for petrock okay, for admin thank you uh, are, there, are there any admins on the call who've, who've had the comms and have had, had a look at it at all that can 
shed some light. Dave's jumped in. Dave Leonard's jumped in. Excellent, Dave. You want to? Yeah, it's um, it's a very. Got my microphone up. Um, it's a very simple process to identify the groups that you want to apply as being over or under 18s. I think if you wanted to extend those privileges to under 18s, you just have to make the decision to mark them as being over 18 on your Google domain. And it, like I said in the chat, it took me two minutes to, to apply it. So I wouldn't be overly concerned that this is an onerous task for your admins when they do get the communication. Uh, it's very simple to make the change. And if they're struggling, then by all means, give me a shout and I'll, I'll hold the hand through it. Excellent. That's Thanks really very much for that, Dave. That's really helpful. Yeah, that's brilliant. Okay. Yeah, Dave for all that. Okay, good. Any other so, questions from anybody else? Sorry, go on in. A different question, Elliot. Uh, right at the start of the conversation, you uh, you talked about the integration uh, with Classroom and Clever, uh, but, but in the States, Clever is a, a single sign-on uh, piece of software that um, is chargeable, uh, and uh, I'm assuming that lots and lots of American schools use Clever as their um, equivalent uh, to uh, to Wand or uh, uh, Salamander or any of the other sort of um, single sign-on products uh, here in the in the UK. Are you intending to do uh, direct sync with things like Arbor or Bromcom or Integris or Sims, uh, so you don't need? Uh, that uh, sort of third-party product. What was the the actual plans for the UK? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this this slide is obviously um, flagged as one of the US-centric slides, um, but there will absolutely be integration into the specific regions, um, top products that we'll be able to do that with. But uh, more and more details will be shared on that um, as and when they go live. No, no, okay, thanks for that, Elliot. Uh, a question from me, Elliot, if that's okay. Um, the the um, um, dual host options within um, Meet, um, are they easy to, I mean, I, I'm guessing they're easy to give, but can you also give take them away once you've given them? I'm thinking as an extra drama teacher, I might be experimenting with giving my students host controls as well as other teachers. Yeah, yeah, so um, they are easy to uh, remove. Excellent, lovely, thank you very much. Good, any other questions? Oh, the other thing that I'm really excited about, which I'm really pleased about, is the waiting room. That's that's a really, that'd be a really, yes, Stuart, I agree, a really nice addition. That that's, that's seems to me a really sensible addition, so I'm looking forward to when that arrives as well. Any other questions from anyone else? You can raise your hand, or we're a small enough group for people to unmute and jump in. James? Oh, yes, can you hear me all right? Yeah, we can hear you fine, James. Thank you. Sorry, I'm on my mobile phone at work. Um, on the question I've got is in the Google Meet, uh, I'm really liking the feature where you can view the uh, presentation that you're doing through the learners. Is there any op options that you'd be able to move the slide along while completing, while viewing it within the Meet? Yeah, absolutely. So um, what you essentially do is share your presentation tab uh, from slides itself, the meets up on the side, so you're interactively working in the presentation itself. So that can move along as of ones up on the side of the meet. So yeah, that's absolutely going to be available. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, James. Anything else from anyone else? Quick, quick question, uh, Paul uh, Elliot. Yeah. If uh, people uh, want to. Uh, um, sort of go through these slides with the, their colleagues in their uh, schools or uh, colleges, uh, then um, where, other than obviously by watching the recording, will they be able to access uh, this uh, information? I can share these slides uh, with yourself, Ian, so we can have a central repository for everyone to view and access them. Okay, no, that that's, uh, that's great. And if it wasn't for today's presentation uh do you think that these will sort of start to appear on uh, the the google uh, education blog or other other sort of channels yeah i mean if if you all make sure you you sign up to the education newsletters all the future releases come out and uh yeah 
as always, we'll be releasing blogs and all the new features uh, as and when they drop and go live. Okay. No, that's uh, that, that's great. <clears throat> uh, sorry, really... sorry, Ian, just before you move on, I've just put the um, Google blog link in the chat if people want it. And I've also put the um, the calendar. The calendar is literally a Google calendar where they put the details of which ones are being released and when. So you actually get a timeline. And you can actually add that to your own Google calendar. If, you, For example, if you're an admin, you might need to know the detail of that, you know, regularly and easily available without having to go to a separate website. So you can add it in as an additional calendar into your own Google Calendar if you need to. So you've got those two things there, should you need them. Sorry, over to you, Ian. Yeah, no, it was just a, a general question. Um, now we've got um, sort of Elliot uh, from the Google Education team um, sort of on the uh, on the call. And, and bearing in mind, we've all had a, a really challenging last uh, 12 months. Um, are there any uh, sort of features or things that we <clears throat> would like to sort of share back uh, with, uh, with Elliot uh, as part of a, a sort of um, crowdsourced uh, wish list uh, about things that we we'd love Google and uh, Chrome <clears throat> sort of devices to uh, to be able to do um, over the, the the next twelve months. I'm sure uh, there must be uh, some uh, bits and pieces that that perhaps across the group you'd be happy to share. So uh, so let let me start. I know Dave, you've always got uh, new ideas. For uh, for adding to it, so Dave, why don't you you start us off, and then people just use your hand uh, uh, to uh, raise and just ask a question. So Dave, what, what do we think we'd like Google to add to our environment in the next twelve months? Before you kick, sorry, Dave. Before you kick off, just to jump in, people can also put them in the Q and A because you can vote up other people's suggestions if you don't necessarily want to speak out. So do use the Q and A because don't forget you can vote them up, and then that gives Elliot a sense of how many people think it's a good idea. Over to you, Dave. Yeah, so, so, sorry, just to jump in before Dave kicks off. Great idea there, Ian. If everyone can fill the chat up with anything that, even if you think it's the most simplistic thing, but would be useful for your specific environment, then yeah, put, put them in here and I can feed that back to the team. Thanks for giving me some time to think there, Elliot. Um, however, <laughs> I've been kind of dropped in at the deep end here. Um, I, I, I've come back from holiday um, and my, my brain isn't yet fully in the teacher experience mode. So I'm looking at it from an admin perspective. And the one thing that I would say from an admin is if we could have the timeout between you being automatically signed out as an admin greater than 0.3 picoseconds, that would be tremendous because <laughs> however many times I can spend the entire day working on the admin panel and I must have to log in 20 or 30 times. So if that was controllable, um, that would be amazing. So that's, I'm gonna put that forward as my as my one wish list. I've already mentioned about the recording in, in Google Meet. Um, so so yeah, being caught on the hop, I'm sure if you, uh, if, if you give me half an hour come up with a much much more extensive list but but those are the two minor annoyances that, that i've put forward and i'll give it other people a chance to to suggest their own now yeah thanks yeah. dave yeah yeah great, great great one there dave and that's it the the, the push about the moment like at the moment is all around security but obviously having the flexibility there we're focusing that on the student side of things but that's great feedback from the administration side of things as well yeah, some really good uh, things coming through from uh, Jason, uh, sort of from a from a uh, college sort of uh, perspective about sub topics and, uh, and and grade books, and I think it's all of these um, sort of um, small changes, Elliot, that uh, just make uh, the the whole product uh, work. Uh, so much for more uh, useful for teachers. And if I if I had a, a more general thing, while people are, are thinking of of other things, if you think about the the tasks that you have to do while you're actually in a classroom, <clears throat> then anything that can be done, um, sort of Elliot, to reduce uh, teacher workload um, and also administrative workloads in sort of uh, general, <clears throat> then I think that uh, these uh, types of um, uh, resources or changes of, of features, I think, would be uh, really welcome sort of this year because more focus on um, on teacher and staff well-being in the next 12 months and trying to, to sort of uh, eliminate these repetitive tasks, 
I think that anything that can be done in that space will be greatly uh, welcomed. So, Paul, I'm uh, just seeing if there's anything else in the in the chat, or if anybody else has got uh, a, a question. Jane. Yeah, I put it in the um, the Q and A's, but we've had terrible problems this year with students when work has returned to them they've been deleting it and of course with the tag the self-assessment process this year it's been a bit of a nightmare so it would be really great if when lecturers return work to students they can't delete it it's caused us endless nightmares this year that's in the Q&A for people. If, they, if people agree, they can always vote that one up. Yeah. The, the, the one for me, um, I used to work for a teacher training organisation that wouldn't use Classroom because the final submission date, they could still unsubmit their work. And that's for that reason, their accrediting university says you can't use it. You've got to use um, Moodle still because, of course, you can there. So, so two, there's two parts to it. That When the final submission date arrives, that's it. They can no longer unsubmit. Um, there was a second part to it. What was the second part to it gone from me? But that certainly is the most important bit. But yeah, I've just really added I've, that's what I've added. Once they've submitted that assignment, it is then locked, and yeah. then they can't then go back and change that submission. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I think those types of uh, points that uh, Jane and Keely are, are raising, Elliot, um, I think that they should be relatively um, simple. Uh, to, uh, uh, to 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 deal with. I always thought uh, that when uh, teachers created stuff and shared it with them, that the document actually belonged to the to the teacher and not to the student. But uh, but I'm uh, I'm sure. And and these are things which of course apply on a wide scale. So uh, <clears throat> anything that can be done to uh, address those uh, types of points uh, just removes the hassle uh that uh, the jane and, and keely are quite rightly saying unfortunately with flexibility comes sometimes unintended consequences mm -hmm. and, and it, it, it needs to be a toggle button doesn't it so you know i'm thinking about the course that i've done you do pass it backwards and forwards a number of times to the students mm -hmm. but there comes a point when the final submission has to be final so it needs to be a button that the, the teacher can say no one more hand and then that's it and then it locks it but before that you can pass it backwards and forwards it and needs to be Needs to be both options need to be available mm. yeah no and thanks to everyone for all of them that's that's really insight insightful feedback so yeah i have making a note of, of all of these i'll share the file of the q a's when it comes through after the meet um elliot so you've got them just in case you miss any perfect thanks paul okay and um <laughs> if there are if there are no other uh things on our wish list um, then uh, just a, 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 a sort of a separate question with um, with the focus and, and Jane, you, you just touched on it about um, um, sort of uh, teacher led um, sort of assessment and, and grading. Um, uh, can uh, anybody share um, sort of what their plans are for dealing with uh, sort of the, the, the mid point assessment types of uh, challenges? Um, sort of um, over the next 12 months so not the you know the current uh, high stakes uh, end of year exams but uh, the, the the process is how are people managing uh, sort of the uh, the interim uh, assessment uh, tasks that they need uh, students to uh, complete anybody wish to talk about that all silent <laughs> I'm assuming that uh, your students are doing some <coughs> mid activity assessments. Peter, what what are, what are the, the the primary students doing uh, with you? How are you doing their assessments? Um, I'm just trying to th think of an example of that, Ian. In terms of mid assessment, it um, it varies from school to school. To be honest, I'm just trying to think what um, how uh, Crossway to tend to be the one who uses most um how they use google classroom and google docs for mid-term assessments um and i've got to say i've not really been there I've, i don't really know the answer to that question what they do but if there is a school that's likely to do it it probably would be then but i, I do uh, agree and it's 
been it's been raised in um it's been raised particularly with the year five and year six teacher at crossways about the issue that you just mentioned before about the submitting and unsubmitting uh, because when they do for example uh, moderated pieces of work for the local authority at the end of key stage two year five year six then that ability to just to cut off um i think would be a great advantage uh, in terms of transparency because that's always an issue with the um moderators that that that, that um in in terms of using digital and not handwritten um writing for their portfolio of writing that uh, that's one of the digital issues that uh, moderators have that's always been that's all that's always been a a writing one and i i, I appreciate google's point of view and i kind of like agree with it that uh, using spell checkers and grammar checkers will help improve the quality of the writing. But in terms of writing moderation, uh, the grumpy people at the DFE are not quite so keen on those tools to help students. And we're only recording this one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're not. Yeah. Well, but but it, you know, it's a lower end of the scale to you know further education. It, it presents a similar kind of a younger age it presents similar issues um okay no that that's fine and and Stephen, i may not have articulated the question uh very well but in uh in ethi uh, colleges uh this uh this process of uh sort of mid-term assessment uh can you just sort of describe what it was when when you were at the college yeah it's, it's more it's more checkpoints it's it's for those uh, people who are um especially for education progressing um an as assessment tool for maths and english resets those kind of um great for, for sixth form great for those kind of programs to assess process um and we put uh, in place four um, assessment checks throughout the year um and, and use different mechanisms some paper some other different tools depending just to ensure that any support um, needed to be put in place or so any iteration in regards to the delivery was then and all the students then went on a personalized learning pathway because just because you're delivering it doesn't mean they're actually going to get to a point and you don't want to fall off that cliff edge leading up to the final exam you actually want to know um, on a continued basis are students getting it is there anything else rather than delivering extra content before we move on to the next so we found that um and uh yeah, there's a there's an amazing tool out there, isn't there, Ian and Chris? You know that, that potentially could support with that. Um, yeah. So no, the, the, the the point is, if you're if you're uh, as a uh, a school or a college, if you're looking um, sort of uh, over the next uh, few months uh, at the whole uh, sort of uh, interim assessment process, um, and whether Stuart, you're an administrator, or um, uh, Jane, whether you're involved in coaching and supporting the teachers uh, then uh, come and talk to us because we have some uh, some approaches that that build on top of your google ecosystem that will actually save um, you all a lot of time and effort uh, in managing those uh, the, those processes so uh, so yeah with that paul i'll hand you back uh, and uh, elliot uh, great uh, great job and thanks for doing the presentation Thanks, Ian. Yeah, I, I mirror that exactly. Fantastic. That was really helpful, Elliot. Thank you very much for that. Um, thank you very much, everyone else, for coming. We're a few minutes early, but you can give you to get the kettle on that a little bit sooner. So that will be fine. Uh, this recording will go into our YouTube channel, of course, as always. Um, do get in touch if you've got any questions that have come from that, and we'd be more than happy to help. Um, and I will hopefully see you all again in another virtual staff room. Can I very quickly tell you about next Wednesday's virtual staff room where David Price OBE is going to present be presenting for us so if you've got a block in your training day or you're not on a training day on that day that's the 1st of September do please come along that is certain to be an equally fascinating session as indeed today's one <laughs>